welcome everyone today we can learn rhizopus the fungus which belong to the subdivision zygomycotina class zygomycetes order mucarels and family mucoraceae rhizopus it is a saprophytic fungus found growing on moist bread jam fruits decaying fruit etc and it is commonly called bread mold as it is often found growing on moist bread and the fungus grows vigorously when there is plenty of moisture and the most common species of rhizopus are rhizopus tolonifera rhizopus nigricans rhizopus attocarpi etc and uh, some rhizopus species act as parasites and causing uh, diseases in uh, plants and uh, animals then move to the vegetative structure of rhizopus and its plant body or thallus is a haploid eucarpic typical mycelium and it grows just like a cottony outgrowth on the substrate is composed of a meshwork of tubular non septate or a septate and multi nucleate hyphae and the cell wall is made up of chitin in young mycelium all the hyphae are almost alike but as growth proceeds they get differentiated into three types namely stolon rhizoids and sporangiophore uh, so in the somatic phase the plant appears as uh, cottony white outgrowth and when it undergoes reproduction and uh, numerous black sporangia may also appear uh, on the tips of certain structure called a sporangiophore which gives a black appearance and hence the fungus is otherwise called a black mold from the mycelial body that grows internal to the substratum three types of hyphae take their origin they are stolon rhizoids and sporangio four stolons are certain horizontally spreading hyphae which are less branch and are confined to the surface of the substrate and the stolon takes its origin from the mycelium which contacts with the substrate and it grows for some distance and produces a node like portion from which again new stolons arise and thus the stolons develop superficially over the substrate next is the rhizoids they are tufts of branching root like hyphae produced from the stolon they are both anchoring and absorptive organ these rhizoids secrete digestive enzymes into the substratum to digest the food and digested food is soon absorbed by them so that we can say that digestion in rhizopus is extra cellular then next structure is the sporangiophore this sporangiophore is the only reproductive structure in the rhizopus thallus and rhizopa and the rhizoids are stolon are the vegetative structure and sporangiophore are formed only at the time of reproduction these sporangiophores are clusters of long unbranched and erect fertile hypha produced from the stolon and they grow vertically upwards and directly opposite to the rhizoids they produce some spherical structure at their tip called sporangia so in a mature thallus of rhizopus we can see three different parts they are rhizoids sporangiophore and stolon in which rhizoids and the stolon are the vegetative structure and sporangiophore is the reproductive structure formed at the time of reproduction next one is the reproduction of rhizopus there are 
three different types of reproduction they are vegetative reproduction asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction first one is the vegetative reproduction and it occurs by fragmentation and the stolon may accidentally break into small pieces and and each piece is capable of growing into a new mycelium next is the asexual reproduction in rhizopus during the time of asexual reproduction the tip of each sporangiophore swell up and a large amount of protoplasm and nuclei flow into the sporangiophore and the protoplasm soon differentiate into two regions that they are the dense peripheral region and a vacuolated central region the peripheral region is fertile and it contains numerous nuclei on the other hand the central region is sterile with some nuclei now a semi circular partition appear in between them then outer region soon become the outer region soon becomes a sporangium uh, during the asexual reproduction the each sporangium for swell at its tip just like this and large amount of protoplasm and nucleus may flow from the remaining part of the hyphae they flow to the tip of the uh, sporangium and the protoplasm soon differentiated into two regions they are dense outer region or the peripheral region which is dense uh, containing numerous nuclei and protoplasm and the central region which is a uh, sterile and contains uh, a few nuclei after some time a semi circular partition appears in between them that is in between the dense peripheral region and the uh, central sterile region now the outer region becomes the sporangium and the inner region is called the columella so after the formation of the semi circular partition in between the uh, outer area and the central area then the outer area the dense outer area becomes the transforms to the uh, sporangium and the central area becomes the columella so in the sporangium the protoplasm undergoes several divisions and forms numerous bits and each bit contain 2 to 10 nuclei and it soon secretes a wall around it thus it becomes multi nuclear spore called a sporangio spore and these mature spores are black in color as i early said we can call rhizopus as black mold because of the presence of the black spores in the asexual stage and when mature these spores are liberated by the bursting of the sporangial walls and they get dispersed far and wide by wind and air currents upon reaching its suitable substratum each spores will germinate and grow to a new rhizopus mycelium under favorable conditions of temperature moisture and humidity let me tell you the steps regarding the sexual reproduction in rhizopus the sexual reproduction takes place at the end of vegetative period and the most of the species are heterothallic that is their thallus are morphologically similar but physiologically some difference is there but in homothallic species the thallus is morphologically and physiologically similar here we can learn the sexual reproduction in heterothallic species sexual reproduction in heterothallic species occurs when different strains that is plus and minus strains grow side by side within the substrate at the time of sexual reproduction two matching hyphae or two hyphal branches belonging to two opposite strains come closer and they are called zygophores okay in first step two hyphal branches belonging to two opposite strains come closer they are called 
zygophores. This is the zygophore of plus hyphae and this is the zygophore of minus hyphae. They meet at a point and later from the point of contact each zygophore swells up and form a club shaped reproductive structure called progametangia. So this is the progametangia and the zygophore after meeting at a point they produce a swelling and the swelling may enlarge due to the flow of protoplasm and nucleus from the remaining part of the hyphae and that club shaped structure is called progametangia. After the uh, flow of nuclei and uh, uh, cytoplasm to the progametangium, a septum is formed in each progametangium and uh, dividing it into a terminal part called senogametangium or gametangium and the basal part is called the suspensor. So this is the gametangia after uh, the progametangia formation a septum is formed in each progametangium which dividing it into a terminal portion called gametangia or senogametangia because it contains multinucleate condition we can call it as senogametangia and the basal portion is called suspensor and this is the vacuolated suspensor and this is the gametangia or senogametangia so this is from uh, the plus gametangia and this is the minus gametangia the senogametangia contains several dense multinucleate uh, cytoplasmic mass known as senogamete and this suspensor has vacuolated cytoplasm and very few nuclei and at the at this stage and at this stage the walls between the two gametangia dissolve so the walls between the two gametangia dissolve so that the two senogametes undergo fusion so here the fusion of cells takes place and uh, forming a senocyte so two senogametes or senogametangia undergo fusion forming a senocygote or a multinucleate zygote that contain numerous diploid nuclei. At that time nuclei from opposite strains that is from plus and minus strains fuse in pairs. Opposite strains fuse in pairs at this time and this is called the senocygote. And these senocygote produce thick resistant dark colored wall around it and it becomes called a senocygospore. So the two senogametes or senogametangia undergo fusion and form a senocygote. Senocygote can secrete a thick resistant dark colored wall around it and it becomes the senocygospore. And this spore can survive adverse climatic conditions and it remains dormant till the advent of uh, favorable condition. Upon getting uh, the suitable condition, it germinates and grows to a new mycelium. So, this is the structure which is showing the suspensor, and this is the xenocygospore with a dark colored uh, thick wall. Next one is the germination of the zygospore and uh, after attaining the favorable condition the zygospore germinates. During germination the diploid zygospore nuclei undergo meiotic division and produce numerous haploid nuclei. In that time the spore wall split open and a tubular hypha like structure protrudes out from the spore and it is called the promycelium and it grows vertically upward and it tips and its tip expands to form a sporangium and this is called a zygosporangium 
and the zygosporangium produces numerous uninucleate spores nearly 50% of these spores belongs to the positive strain and the rest belongs to the negative strain so this is the uh, outline of entire sexual reproduction first one is uh, positive and minus strain come together that is the zygophores come, come together progamete angio formation takes place from that gamete angium is formed and the basal uh, stalk is called the suspensor the fusion of gamete angium takes place and the, the structure xenozygote is formed and the xenozygote secretes a thick wall around it a spiny wall around it and form the xenozygospore and after getting suitable condition the xenozygospore from the xenozygospore uh, tubular hyphae protrudes and that is called a promycelium and it grows vertically upward and form the sporangium and this is called a zygosporangium and the zygosporangium produces numerous uninucleate spores and uh, after uh, maturation the uh, zygosporangial wall breaks and the spores are released to the outside and upon getting suitable uh, substratum the spores germinate to corresponding plus and minus uh, rhizopus hyphae this is the entire life cycle of rhizopus you see that in sexual reproduction two hyphae uh, belonging to plus and minus come closer and the fusion takes place the progametangia formation and from that gametangia formation fusion takes place after the nuclear fusion the diploid zygospore is formed after meiosis uh, numerous uh, spores are formed and uh, uh, meiosis also mitosis takes place and, and these spores uh, upon germination to produce the hyphae of the rhizopus and also during asexual reproduction the sporangiospore the haploid sporangiospore germinate to form the new mycelia here also the sporangiospore germinate to form the rhizopus mycelia so this is the entire life cycle of rhizopus thank you for watching